Welcome again to another sizzling session of Fire Starters. I'm not alone today. I am with uh, Julia from the box office, aka Ticketing. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Julia, please yes. introduce yourself. Hi, I am Julia Savage. I am the box office lead um, and have been for the last, gosh, since 2000 and, sorry, since 19, no, since 2012. Yes, 2012, and yeah, that, uh, I do all things tickets, so if you, you've probably dealt with me at one point to try and get into the booth, uh, but basically, yeah, you basically interact with my, you definitely interact with my portfolio if you come to the booth. Mm. Yeah, the portfolio function is to, I guess, in some ways bring in the money for the entire organisation through ticket sales. Um, and yeah, to try and be radically inclusive and to try and uh, make sure that everyone has access to a ticket uh, regardless of, of their sort of income and that kind of stuff. So that's, that's my job. Awesome. <laughs> Through the different types of different types of tickets, right. So we've got the, um, recently, and actually for the past three or four years, we've got the Mayday ticket type, which is the very, very expensive ticket type at 5,499 Rand. And that ticket type we priced uh, quite high for the international, we urge the international community to buy that ticket because I think it's, it's actually even, it's even a cheap ticket by international standards. Um, but the, the benefit with this ticket is that it goes on sale early and it stays on sale for quite some time um, because it's not one that a lot of people purchase. So if you're an international person, you're able to purchase your ticket, know that you've got a, bird, a, a, a ticket to Africa Bird, and then you can make your travel arrangements and the stress of having a ticket isn't there for you. Um, and then once we created the Mayday ticket, which has a, a, a donation element to it, so it's basically the difference between the main ticket price and the Mayday ticket price, that part is a donation. We had a whole bunch of South Africans going, I can't really afford the, the Mayday ticket, I still want to buy a donation based ticket. So then we made the New Horizon ticket, which is sort of geared towards the more wealthier South African or local person that would like to make a donation to the burn. Um, so that ticket is, Forgetting, I think they are three, four, nine, nine, um, and again, those tickets go on sale early, and they don't sell out very quickly. And you sort of you making a donation with your ticket, but you're also securing your ticket without having to to try and secure one in the general sales, which generally at this point of our existence is a bit of a bad fight. Um, and then you've got your ticket types. Then you've got your general sales ticket price, which is basically what it costs us to have you at the desert in the desert and that is what we sell the bulk of and that goes on sale as a general sale and this year it sold out in a couple of hours yes yeah very nice there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good fun <laughs> um and that's you know any anyone can buy whichever ticket type uh, but that's sort of the, the the idea behind it and then if you're a creative project and you've registered a creative project with africa burn you can request direct distribution tickets from your Wrangler who, uh, and this process actually happens before the general sale. Um, so you can request tickets for your crew and we then allocate them to you, you allocate them to your crew and then you need to buy them before the general sale. Um, so that's just to make sure that our contributors uh, have their tickets and don't have to scuttle for a ticket in the general sale. So that's what our DDT is all about. And then most importantly, we've got the subsidized ticket program, which is people like students, people that are just not earning high, where like a 2,500 rand ticket is expensive. So low earners, um, which could be students, which could be business, you know, um, people that are starting their own business, and we all know how difficult that is. Single parents, for example. And the, so these are me, means-based tickets, and you'll apply for those tickets, we'll look at your application, and then either award a ticket to you or not award a ticket for you. Um, and then further than that, we've got the Anati program, uh, which is basically a 250 rand ticket, and this is geared towards <coughs> people that are absolutely cannot 
even buy a subsidized ticket. Um, so it's also means based. You apply for these tickets. Um, you have to send in like proof of of all sorts of things like your income and that kind of stuff, and then you're awarded an Anati ticket. Um, and you can also uh, incidentally apply for a grant at the same time. So that that whole process for future, if you don't know about these programs, they're actually they start in about September, and they conclude sort of November-ish of the year before the boom. Um, and so, you, you know, if you want to apply for those tickets, you need to get on, on onto your admin early. So that's that's sort of the box office in a nutshell. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was so much information. But the beauty about it is that you actually get to donate. So guys, let's buy the May Day tickets. Let's buy the general. Well, I mean, at this point, we're all completely sold out. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Everything. May Days are sold out. New Horizons. So absolutely all the subsidized tickets are allocated. All the Anati tickets are allocated. Um, but we do have one more sale one last sale it is a tiny sale <laughs> on the 29th of, of the 29th of this month at 12 o'clock there are not a lot of tickets i imagine it will sell out in a couple of seconds um so don't count on it um alternatively you can go to quicket and um which is our ticketing platform and you can try for a resale ticket and as someone who gets emailed a lot of support queries the resale tickets are starting to be loaded up now and as it usually does sort of closer to the burn people realize they can't come mm -hmm. and so if you don't have a ticket now just keep checking back on quicket because there might be a ticket that goes on resale at any moment oh what a yeah. very to thank you yeah pleasure, pleasure. Um, there is a new session actually on the ticketing. We've got pensioners now. Oh, we do have pensioners. And kids. What about the kids? The kids, yes. Thank and you for the bringing cars. Them up. And the cars. The cars <laughs> are actually an old one, but uh, you have to. If you're driving a vehicle, you have to. Um, you have to buy a, a car pass, or we call it e-toll pass for your vehicle. Um, so it's not one. It's not not every single person who has a ticket has to buy an e-toll pass. It's just one e-toll pass for your for the vehicle you're in. Uh, and then kids, for the first time this year, are free, free of charge, because we're trying to encourage kids to come back to the burn. Uh, we definitely saw a bit of a drop in kids attending the burn, so we've made the ticket type free. So that's kids from, from zero until 12. Um, and then uh, 12 until uh, twelve till 18, well, basically 12 up, you pay a normal ticket price. But yeah, kids up until 12 come in for free, and you can buy those tickets, at, well, redeem those tickets at the gate. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Do we have a fun fact regarding your portfolio ticketing? Fun fact. Okay, I've actually the the the, the, the great thing about the um, the box office is that you get all the data. <laughs> um, so I'm sure if you've bought a ticket to Africa Burn, you've like rolled your eyes at the amount of questions that we ask. <laughs> and that's because we love the data. We love to know where you're from. We love to know what language you speak. We love to know everything about you. So some fun facts is that at 2023, last year, there was 41.5% internationals, people traveling from internet, over, over international waters to come to Africa Burn. That was 41.5%. That's up from life, from the year before. I think the year before was thirty two percent, which me, yeah. Oh, so so basically, there's not a. It's it's like half half. If you think that you, that you feel like the bird is very international, it literally is very international, um, because it's nearly half half, <laughs> um, which means that it's fifty fifty point five percent uh, are local South Africans coming. And then we've got a 2% of South Africans who live abroad, and then a 6% of people, internationals, living in South Africa. So in some ways, that 6% of the 41% make 50% of the internationals coming to the bird. And then, yeah, just to rattle off some countries as, as to where people come from, our top contenders is South Africa. Yeah. Germany, next. Netherlands, next. Great Britain is below Netherlands. France, USA is only, what, number one, two, six on the list. Switzerland, Israel, Belgium, um, Zimbabwe, Reunion, Australia, the UAE, Spain, Canada, Kenya, Ireland, Italy, Sweden, Namibia, Portugal, it's all over, Russia, Maycott, Luxembourg, Norway, yeah. Mexico, New Zealand, Denmark, <laughs> uh, the Dominican Republic, yeah, 
Jordan, Malawi, um, Nigeria. There's, we have a very, very, very uh, large number of representation from all over the world. So yeah. uh, around the world in Africa, it burned for seven days. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Around the world in Africa, burned yeah. for seven days. So you're definitely getting a, a hugely cultural experience at the birth. Amazing. So South Africans, let's keep up and make sure that we are always number one and always supporting ourselves and coming to yeah, support yeah, yeah. the bird and show everybody who are here to visit what Africa is because we are representing the Africa in Africa bird. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so some fun facts is that 68% of those internationals do buy the Mayday tickets, which we appreciate. And 55, but there's still a good 22% of South Africans that buy the Mayday tickets, yeah, which is interesting. Beautiful. And then um, there's 55% of the internationals by the Mayday, sorry, the New Horizons ticket, so that's a slightly cheaper um, donation-based ticket, and 35% of those by, are from South Africa. So that's just a sort of interesting fact. I find it interesting. It is interesting. <laughs> um, and yeah, 60% uh, of the general sales tickets goes to South Africans, and then the other 40% goes to the internationals. So we need to keep the word spreading it, saving money so we are able to buy and donate because it's also about donating because our donations, what they go back to the grants that uh, enable our artists. Yeah, I guess it just goes back to the organization and what it is that we do in the world. But yes, a lot of it goes to towards art grants, to our, um, uh, well, just keeping the whole organization afloat. Uh, you know, the, the thing about the thing about Africa Bird is that it's, it's far away. <laughs> I'm sure you can all agree that it's not, it's a schlep to get there, so it's an expensive yeah. event to put on. Um, and there's, and a, huge, to get there there's a huge well. medical element that, uh, you know, so anyway, that's where all the money goes on. But if you want to, if you really want to know where the money goes to, you can find our financials on the Africa Bird website. That's correct. Because we're a hugely transparent organisation in that regard. We are. Yeah. I love that part. <laughs> we are transparent. <laughs> yeah. So, no shenanigans, yeah. Thank you for that yeah. fun fact, Pleasure. Julia. Well, I think they're fun. They <laughs> are. Like, just knowing that yeah. how many ranks, who's from where, who are the age groups as well. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. very interesting. And those are also available on the website. No, not really. It's more kind the of internal. Statistics. But we should put it on the website. Yeah, we should put it. The stats, I think they do get, yeah, mm. I think they do, they do get, um, the after the event, event. Yes. I think an email goes out with all those sorts of Information. Julia, care to share how you got involved with ticketing or Africa Burn as the org itself? Uh, yeah, so I um, I was living in London. And actually, no, I was living I was living in Cape Town before I left to go to London. Mm. And my uncle at the time had a picture of Centre Camp from Burning Man on his computer. And I looked at it and I was like, geez, that looks incredible. What is that? So he's like, oh, it's this event in America called Burning Man. And he explained the whole kind of ethos and, and what it was all about. And I was like, God, it sounds fantastic. I want to go. Then I go off to, to London and I'm working and living there. And um, my aunt and my uncle phoned me and they're like, listen, we're going to Burning Man. Do you want to come along? I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So off we go to Burning Man. Didn't know what the hell we were getting ourselves into. Um, yeah, so that was in 2006. That was before Africa, Africa Bird was even a twinkle in our eyes. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we went to Burning Man and then I was back in London and then um, there was a guy named Paul Jorgensen who worked at the Burn and he came to South Africa and he, he wanted to start a, a Burn in yes. South Africa. And so he contacted a lady named Bill Black and, um, and said, look, we want to start this. And she, look, I might be wrong with the detail, but she was like, I can't definitely do this by myself. But I know Monique, who's my aunt, mm -hmm. uh, and her husband Richard actually have been to Burning Man and let's get in touch with them. And so they got in touch and they started the burn. Um, you know, all of them, the, all the founders. And um, 
Then I came back from London, and when, because it was a purely volunteer-driven organisation, mm. I don't think they were profiting at that point. It was just, <laughs> it was just them. It was very much a labour of love. Um, and so when I came back from London, Monique was like, "I need you to get involved with Burn." <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, sure, no, that's fine." So I did. So at the time, we did everything. We did. I even managed the volunteer portfolio at one point. Um, yeah, you've been on. Yeah, no, I've done. I've done pretty much everything. It feels like. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so did that, and then eventually, um, Burning Man came to come see us because we had this. Well, Africa Burn was becoming this incredibly um, big event in South Africa, and incredibly well known actually in the Burn community. So Burning Man flew out to South Africa, and they said to us, they gave us some advice, and they said, "Listen, you need to." Depart mentalize the burn. You need to have a creative portfolio, ranges, you know, and you need people to lead each portfolio. So we were at this meeting in Scarborough and uh, they were like, okay, well, how do we divvy up the jobs? <laughs> so everyone's like, well, let's just say, say a portfolio, everyone puts up their hand who wants to be involved with it, and that's how we're going to do it. So creative portfolio, and everyone puts up their hands, they want to be involved in creative portfolio, and everyone puts up their hand, and I want to be rangers, and I want to be this, I want to be that. And then they were like, great, who wants to do the box office and ticketing? And I was like, me! <laughs> no, no one else in the room was like, yeah, I want to do it. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it. And, so, and that's been, yeah, yeah that's, that's been, been ever since. since. Yeah. Wow, so since 2007, basically. No, no, no. I only came in 2009, so I think it was, no, it was 2012. No. Yeah, that we formalised. I mean, the gate was an app. I don't even know why we sold tickets because it wasn't really. <laughs> there was no gate. Yeah, we used to. <laughs> speaking of, we used to we used to sell paper tickets. Uh, so you actually got paper tickets. We used to sell them at a shanty lodge, and I would go and collect the money <laughs> oh, <laughs> in no. like a in like a t uh, kit bag, and then go to the bank and spend about five hours just depositing money into the account. And everyone would come, and then if you lost your ticket, there was no ways you could get in, you know. But I mean, there was because we hardly had a gate to set up. And so when the event was getting really big, um, the one, the one, the biggest thing I had to do was a get the ticketing online because there was uh, the, the South Africa was definitely moving to online ticketing, and then secondly to, to sort the gate out. So for those of you that can remember the old old days, you'll remember the gate being incredibly porous, and then the next year after I took over, <laughs> the gate becoming like this well-oiled machine. <laughs> She and is just that. <laughs> Julia, guys, oh my god, she is yeah, the yeah, smartest. Yeah. So if you think that our ticketing system is she bang, it's because this lady is behind Thank it. You all. Very much. So, That's very sweet. Thank you. Yeah, so I think I mean I think one thing to say about the gate is that it's important. We ask all those questions with the tickets, but uh, some of you might know, some of you might not know, is that we link the tickets to a to your wristband number. On your wristband? There's a code. Uh, these are last year's kids' wristbands. Mm -hmm. And so there's a code on the wristband. It's mm -hmm. over here. I don't know if you can see it. And we link your ticket, uh, your wristband, to the database, which we then put into the emergency services box. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then if you are unable to talk <laughs> or whatever, like if you find yourself in a spot of bother at the burn, we're able to look up all your details, phone your your emergency contact, um, see if you've got any medical information that, that would be useful to us, or whatever. Even just to know where your camp is so we can take you back to your camp. Yeah. So that's why I'm sure a lot of you stand in the queue at the burn and like, oh my god, wow. this queue is very long. Um, but it's because we're doing that link and it's because we're a festival for seven seven days in the desert and I can tell you by Wednesday things start <laughs> going <laughs> pear shaped and that's when the wristband got to, gets used a lot. Um, but fun fact, yes. you don't ever wait longer than, longer than one hour in the queue. Mm -hmm. In the queue at the box office, I'm not talking about the queue at the gate which we experienced last year, I mean sorry from the gate to the actual Africa Bird gate, but once you're in the queue to get to the box office it never lasts about more than about an hour, maybe an hour and a half on the really, really busy night. On the really yeah. busy So it's not as bad as you, as it might feel. Mm. But we try and make it fun in the queue. No, you do. <laughs> I remember my first time last year, it was amazing. I was like, what's happening? 
happening, seeing hearing the music in the background, seeing all the events yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's gonna happen, and then getting the restored. The guy who assisted me was very friendly. I okay. enjoyed the conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. and getting my goodie bag. Yeah. Could I call it a goodie bag? A swag bag. Swag bag. I guess if you're uh, the the guide, the WTF guide. And all that. Yeah. So guys. Your ticket, as they say, this is basically your ID for the whole week, for the whole seven days that you're there. This number is your ID. So keep it on as much as you can. Don't lose it. Reuse it. And if you lose it, keep it. <laughs> if, you lo- if you lose it, it falls off and you've got it, keep it and come to the gate and we'll, we'll reissue you. Oh, that's yes. bad. Volunteering. Have you volunteered and what is your volunteering experience within the ticketing? Ah, volunteers, yes. So I started when I first started, got involved in Prune, I volunteered very much so. Um, uh, on the volunteer portfolio, I was even a director at one point. Um, but yeah, basically I volunteered on the box office for, for a very long, like the lead, for a very long time. And then eventually Africa went formalised things and we started getting a salary when the workload got too much. And we had to start justifying taking less work in our real lives to accommodate the huge task that is Africa Bird. Um, but then I, I kept the volunteer, because the, the box office is, is a... I don't know, it's a very it's a very sort of sensitive point, entry point into the burns. I left I kept the the people that worked the box office were generally people part of my camp, the scallywags, the guys that have the mini um, tuk tuk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so they would basically do all the box office shit. So I guess in some ways they were volunteers, but they were they were from my camp. And then about two years ago I opened it up to the to the greater community. Um, uh, so everyone that scans, you know, scans you in at the window, they're all a volunteer, mm-hmm. and they need to apply with me, um, and then run through training uh, prior to the event um, to be able to to scan people, you know, because yeah, so it's working. It's working with the system. You always need to know what the system is like yes. in order to work with it. Yeah. Okay. So anyone can come and just send you an email. Send me send me an email. Um, I will send you the application form, which basically just asks asks you a couple of questions, what's your intention, what's your default rule work, you know, that kind of stuff. Because it's, it's technical, you know, and, so, and, it's, and it's fast-paced, fast-moving, you know, when True. you've got a queue which is True. kind of looping around the desert. You need to be quite fast, but you need to be quite efficient. So you kind of need someone who's quite savvy on the computer and can, is not nervous of it, you know. Um, yeah, so we, we do do it on an application basis first. <clears throat> and then, and then, yeah. Once you're in, you're in, and then you get trained. And I'm now starting to have a lot of box office volunteers coming back each year because they love it so much. Because it is fun. You get to meet like all ten thousand. Is it all in one go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the best meeting spot ever. You know, if you need to meet your friends, just put your name down for the day that they're all going to arrive, and then you'll check them in. <laughs> That's beautiful. Actually, yeah. I thought about. So it. please don't forget. As much as you can't volunteer right now for box office, they do. do can yeah, you email us, and we will send you the application form. And you can email us at dhek, d i e h e k, at africaburn dot com, and we'll send you the uh, application the application form. Okay, and I do believe you also can sign up there on the volunteer shifts to do. DHEC or yes, or DHEC, which is outside in the at the cars, um, doing a lot of traffic management, if I'm honest, but also a lot of greeting, greeting, which is what people love at the mm-hmm. gate, um, and then just making sure that when people leave the box office, that they've got all their stuff, they've got their wristbands, they've got their vehicle passes. Here's a vehicle pass that we had two, two or three years ago. This is the year before, but I don't know. Anyway, yeah, yeah, those are vehicle passes. That and each car get. going through, yeah. Cool. The ticketing box office has a color, and have you ever had any challenges within the volunteer, the box office portfolio? Portfolio. Um, I colors. Ugh, I seem to be. Levitating towards black and blue, mm, <laughs> but black it's, and blue. it's definitely not as um, 
as recognized like the orange ranges or the yellow at EPW. Uh, but I think black and blue is sort of the color that I seem to play around with. Um, challenges, I'll tell you what challenges are, is Viagogo, that flippin' resales platform where people, it's a legitimate resale platform where people upload tickets and sell it and then the secure exchange of money happens online. Except what happens is that people, scalpers, are buying very cheap tickets from us, like the kids' tickets, for example, or like the e-toll passes, uh, the car passes, and selling them on Viagogo as, you know, under the disguise that it's a full ticket, you know, to Africa Burn. And then you get these people who, because they haven't bought the ticket through Quicket, and so they haven't received any of the communication from us at all. They don't, they've got zero communication from Africa Burn. And so they arrive at the gate and their ticket is invalid. And that's my biggest challenge. And I have to, I can't let them in because we are at capacity um, on, on site. And so all our, all our medics, toilets, all of that is based on, you know, the amount of stuff that we've got on site is based on the amount of tickets that I sell. And I cannot be letting people in with go go tickets. Um, so I guess my advice to you is if you're coming to the burn and you're driving with someone up, like just check your tickets. If they are from Viagogo, they are not legitimate. They are not real. And if they are a real ticket, they're not the ticket type that will get you in. They're a vehicle pass, which is literally just a car to get uh, a ticket to get your your car in, but not you. Or they're a kid's ticket, and unless you're 12 years old and below, you're not going to be let in on that ticket. Oh, so. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's horrible, and my heart breaks when these people arrive, you know, like a whole family on Via Go Go tickets, and I'm just like, oh my god, I hate this. And now they have to either go back or buy the actual tickets? No, well, they have to go back because we don't have tickets, so then they oh try and buy tickets. We'll give them a, 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 a an internet token at the gate, which is really sketchy and patchy internet, and they'll try and buy tickets from the resale mm -hmm. platform. Sometimes they come right, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I have people gift me a ticket. They're like, we're not going to use this. We can mm. give it to someone else. And then I call that Miracle Corner. And I suss it out and, and then we might, might have a Miracle ticket to give you. But more times than not, we don't. Because not a lot of people give us Miracle tickets. You know? That's true. So please just check that your ticket isn't from Via Go Go. Please just like check that. <laughs> just don't buy it via Google. Just go to Quicket. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and if you're buying a ticket from someone else, tell them to upload it onto the resale platform on Quicket. Because then we, what we what Quicket does is that they cancel the barcode, they reissue a new barcode into your name. So the ticket is legitimately yours. Even the person who sold it to you cannot use their ticket because that barcode is doesn't exist anymore in the system. Awesome. That is very oh, hi hi fun to you though. Ooh, 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 you heard it, ticketing. Um, I think I'm gonna join the ticketing. Next yeah, time. I have to do a box office shift. It's fun. <laughs> Monday Monday afternoon at about twelve o'clock things are falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just be there encouraging you in the line, the queues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've come to the end. Yes, we that have. is a very sweet, short, informative, very fun facts involved as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Julia. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, enjoy yours. Otherwise, stay cool. Bye. See you in the burn. See you in the dance. <laughs>